I hate it. I absolutely goddamn hate it. And if your main character is a tank, or if you're trying to just get those crafting surveys done, or do a quest while you're not raiding or doing dungeons, or even you just want to explore the open world of Tamriel, then you know what I'm talking about. Hello everyone, it's time to Nephis and Chill, and in this video, I'll be showing you several universal builds and setups you can use for your tanks, regardless of class, food, how many points you have put into health, what your Mundus or Champion points are. The purpose of this build video is to not give a single shit about what your tank build is, avoid spending too much gold or materials or time to get the gear to make your tank be able to quest, and do overland content by him or herself. That's right, you'll no longer have to ask people to party up with you and kill some skeletons for a daily quest, or thank the gods that you have the Shadow Rider passive from the Dark Brotherhood questline as you spam rapid maneuvers to not aggro mobs as you try to pick up a node. I want you to avoid going to the respect shrines or even changing a Mundus stone out if you really don't feel like it, because you gotta change your shit back for trials or dungeons with your friends every time you wanna kill some jackals in Kragalorn. On the video, you'll see a list of my recommended setups. 5P's Hunting's Rage, 5P's Vicious Ophidian, plus 5P's Hunting's Rage, and 5P's New Moon Acolyte, plus 5P's New Moon Acolyte, and 5P's Vicious Ophidian, plus, and lastly, 5P's Hunting's Rage and 5P's Ancient Dragon Guard. And by the end of this video, I'll also be showing you guys bar setups you can do on your Necromancer, Templar, Nightblade, Warden, and Sorcerer Tanks. If you are full CP at 810 champion points and want to spend one or two vet or normal trial runs to get some vicious fitting gear on body, i do it. If not, you can just craft a couple of the sets and combinations above. And in this video, I will be showcasing the Hunting's Rage and Ancient Dragon Guard combo, which I would recommend for any lower CP player. If you can't craft either one, you can ask your friends or guildies to help you make them. Most people should at least be able to craft a set of Hunting's. I personally will be running 5 Hundings and Vicious Fitting or the New Moon setup with Vicious Fitting on my streams if you ever catch me questing. As you'll see, we can solo world bosses, we can go through delves, or open areas of the world without a worry, freedom in our sails, and even solo dolmens. Again, we want to make sure we're not investing too much into this solo build because if you're like me, you may not have gotten all the sky shards or skill points in this game, or your tank may be your crafter, and so on and so on. All this build is going to ask of you is to get two ender passes, bow passes, and take three active abilities from both skill lines and use the class skills you already have most likely unlocked. And of course, you'll probably you know fill up some inventory space, but that's like a very very low price to pay for finally being able to kill things alone without asking anyone else for help. In this part of the video, I'll be explaining to you guys the setup and the reasoning behind the gear. And we'll completely uh, ignore the champion points because, again, I don't, I don't even look at what my champion points are. It, that's, it just doesn't matter. And, of course, for the character stats, this is we have many points we have into health, 64 points. We didn't put any points to stamina, we didn't put any points to Magicka, whatever. And these are our stats with the gear slotted. These are uh, recovery stats as well. Uh, and, of course, the Mundus Dune, I didn't switch to the Lover, I didn't switch to the Shadow. This is like literally a build you can just slap on any time and be fine with questing effectively or and so forth for overland content. And the food wise, again, you don't need RTM takeaway broth. You can do tristat food, you can do build with sugar skull food, you can do bistat food, you can even the green food if you'd like. It, it's, it's, it, it doesn't matter. And of course here, for the gear setup, the monster set does not matter as well. Whatever you want, if you're new to the game, you can craft or ask someone to craft you two pieces uh, that you want a bonus out of. You can look at a list of sets like Night Mother's Gaze or other damage boosting sets to add to your arsenal. Maybe you want some spell damage or maybe weapon damage or uh, you want some weapon crit because this setup is mostly going to be stam based or these setups are going to be mostly stam based just because. Uh, otherwise, Bloodspawn, Dervacoon, Earthcore, Lord Warden, and other monster sets you typically wear as a tank won't affect your effectiveness too much while doing overland content and in fact may sometimes even help you. So for the gear, we have Hunting's Rage. We have Hunting's Rage on both bow and two-hander and this, this counts as two uh, piece set items. And on the body we have three Hunting's to complete the five piece no matter what bar we are on. Note that you don't need to get the Master Marina, you don't need to do whatever arena to get 
you know, weapons or farm weapons for this. You can just craft it or have someone craft it for you. So five huntings on both bars. And for the Ancient Dragon Garden, you can just have very cheap jewelry crafted for you. Even CP160 is not too expensive to craft. Uh, you don't have to improve this at all. You don't have to improve this green. You can if you want. Uh, you don't have to improve this to even gold or even the weapons of gold. And Ancient Dragon Guard is going to complete our five piece. And you want robust on all pieces of jewelry because bloodthirsty, again, you don't need bloodthirsty for most overland content anyway. To go over to Stam Enchantments, uh, you want Stam Enchantments. And why did I do Divines? Because the Mundus doesn't matter. Well, just in case if you do want to swap out your Mundus Stone, go with Divines. Uh, for the Jewelry Enchantments, we have Weapon Damage Enchantments. And for the sword, the Two-Hander Enchantment, you can either do a Weakening Enchantment, in case the World Boss you're trying to solo or something else that's getting in your way uh, hurts a bit too much especially if you don't have all 64 points into health or whatever, or if you've evenly distributed your attributes and you notice more uh, damage coming your way, or if you have lower CP. Or you can do Absorb Stamina Enchantment. Again, you don't, have to, you don't have to craft poisons or nothing to just do this build. And on the back bar, you want a Weapon Damage Enchantment, or again, uh, I would recommend it, but if you feel like another enchantment is going to help you, go for it. But this, has, this is going to be a noticeable boost to your damage over land. And Hundings, the 5 piece, I mean, it's all damage. Weapon crit, max stam, weapon crit, max, uh, weapon damage. It's one of the best sets still in the game that's craftable for stam specs. And it's just so easy to build around stam, more so it is than to build around a max spec, especially as a tank. Um, an Ancient Dragon Garden, it's going to be interesting because... When I, was, when I was looking through multiple sets, I found that Ancient Dragon Guard would probably perform the best for the lower CP players, simply because it just gives us a lot of stats. Like, not only does it give us max health, not only does it give us weapon damage and weapon crit, just like Hunting's does, um, but the 5 piece is going to add a considerable amount of weapon and spell damage, although you'll be more inclined to, you know, be dipping into weapon damage as a step spec, while your health is above 50%. Also, if you dip under 50% health, you get more mitigation, and this will prove especially useful considering if, let's say, you don't have a source of Major Ward, Major Resolve from, uh, you know, like, Mage's Guild that a lot of tanks use, obviously you won't be using this. Uh, if you want to use a class skill that offers Major Ward, Major Resolve, go for it. But I found that sometimes you don't have bar space, especially when you're running around with Rapids on the back bar. And that's pretty much it. That's all the gear. Those are all the traits. Those are all the enchantments. And that's it. Uh, for race, again, it doesn't matter what race you are. It's just the purpose of this build. I'm just sick and tired of not questing on my tank. I feel like a huge part for a lot of tanks, including myself, that what turns us off from, you know, doing quests and overland stuff is the lack of damage we have. And I, I don't know about you guys, but I feel very lazy. I don't want to just respect between, you know, attributes and champion points and skill skills. It gets expensive after a while as well. That's the whole purpose of this build. For the skills, um, I'm just going to go over the Dragon there real quick, but then right after this, I'll be showing you guys all the uh, other other class uh, bar setups for Necromancer and so forth. But for the Dragon Knight in particular, we won Brawler on the front bar. Brawler is an amazing skill, uh, especially for Overland, especially if you're hitting multiple mobs. It's going to give you a bigger shield in case you feel like you don't feel safe, even with the other uh, setups I showed you in the video. Um, Stone Giant is going to be your main spammable, and it's also going to be the initial hit of it is going to be a really useful AoE that applies Stagger. And we have Reverse Slice, this is going to be really good for 99% of Overland content where everything's just all bunched up together. Uh, you're going to be doing a lot of splash damage. Venomous Claw is a single target dot, and we have Resolving Vigor on the front bar. If you don't have the Alliance War skill lines unlocked, you can consider other things like uh, Dragon Blood. Or you can switch uh, Venomous Claw to Burning Embers if need be. Other than that, it's a really strong heal. I would not recommend the other Morph. Because, honestly, screw everybody else in the open world. <laughs> and uh, Flawless Dawnbreaker in the front bar. If you don't have Flawless Dawnbreaker, you can do like Dragon Leap or something. It doesn't really matter. Um, but it's just nice to get that extra uh, weapon damage boost. In addition to your Hundings and your Ancient Dragon Guard uh, weapon damage boost. On the back bar, we have Endless Hail, Soul Splitting Trap if you want to fill your soul gems and empty soul gems. That's another thing. Um, 
as well if you want to uh, fill your empty soul gems while questing and stuff. Igneous weapons is an option, especially if you're going to use uh, tri-stat potions or just trash potions, to be honest with you, for questing and overlaying stuff. Charging maneuver, you can obviously swap this out as a flex spot every time you encounter something a bit more difficult in terms of questing or, you know, solo immortal bosses and stuff like that. Elude is also going to be a pretty interesting skill to have for uh, major evasion because a lot of world bosses and a lot of uh, content in this game have a lot of AoE damage. And major evasion is going to significantly reduce your damage, especially when you're in um, all medium or at least five medium. And again, it will depend on whether you not uh, whether whether or not you have, you know, points into health or what your, your tank stats look like while you're not tanking in dungeons and trials. This build is just meant to kind of encompass every single scenario. And on the back bar for the Dragon Knight bar setup, it's gonna be Magma Shell. And that's pretty much it, guys. Here you go for the other class bar setups.